Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna spend a bit of time out in the greenhouse just working on a couple of planting projects. It's beautiful out. I mean, the sun is shining. We got a little snow yesterday. Oh, there's cheddar. See, just a little bit, enough to make things look pretty. But it's supposed to be 42 today and like 47 tomorrow, so it'll be gone quickly. And I'm not gonna complain about the snow. That just equals extra moisture for us. So anyway, today what we're gonna be doing is starting our second round of seeds for our cut flower garden. So we already have round one done, which are the Lysianthus. Those are already growing in the studio. Today we're starting Snapdragons, 10 different varieties of those, and Senecio. Those are the only two types of plants I have on my list this year that fall within that needing to start at eight to 10 weeks prior to planting out. Our next round will be those that need to be started six to eight weeks prior. So I have all those right here. The other thing we're gonna work on is just potting up some things. So this is from the Christensen's Nursery booth at the Northwest Flower and Garden Festival. I bought one of these for myself and my mom. I'm actually not even sure what it is. It looks like an ivy, right? But the leaves are heart-shaped. They're so pretty. And then a couple of you guys brought me some starts from your garden, which was so fun. So we have a blackberry tiger mountain a tiger mountain rather blackberry and then we've got some monkshood and lily of the valley it just seemed like a fun thing to do this afternoon i don't really have any other updates in here i mean i recently showed you the ranunculus maybe they've put on a little more growth since i showed you last they look excellent i'm gonna be what i need to be watering in here maybe i'll do that first i need to water uh but you know i've got fodder going in a couple different stages for the chickens i need to soak some more seed today i just put those in there we've got onions going but all the perennials we started that was just very recently so we don't have any action on those yet crickets so far this is the other bunch of them they're just chilling only had to water them once since since we planted the only other thing that we've got going project-wise in here are the Lonicera uh, box honeysuckle topiaries that we've started. Remember when we started these? Oh my gosh, they were so mangy and they are putting on so much growth. We actually should come in and trim some of them up a little bit. A few of them even have blooms and they've put on like all this growth right here that I need to trim and that will help them thicken up even more. Okay, before I drag the hose out and water, let me show you the seeds we're gonna be starting. So this is a Senecio, it's a Dusty Miller is the common name. The variety is New Look. And this is for uh, cut, cut foliage, uh, filler kind of stuff. But these should be pretty easy. I'm actually going to pot them up today and then take them into the studio because they need it to be a little bit warmer to germinate. So it's a little more consistent in there. Both of these types need it to be like 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. In here, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely that right now, uh, but it dips at night. You know, it doesn't maintain in here yet. It's 72 in here right now. It feels great. In fact, I wore this great big puff, puffy vest because I thought I was going to be chilly out here, but it's, it's not chilly. For the Snapdragons, we have Apple Blossom, which is probably one of my favorite varieties of Snapdragon ever. We have Bridal Pink, Legend Light Pink, Madame Butterfly Bronze with White. I prefer this one over the Madame Butterfly Bronze. This one with the white, it just adds a little bit more dimension and I love it. We've got Madame Butterfly Ivory, Madame Butterfly Red, Orleans Early Lemon Yellow, Potomac Ivory, Potomac Lavender, Potomac Yellow. That's 10, right? Yeah. We're gonna be planting them in the 72 count trays here. I'm gonna be putting these in our Oslo grow light in the studio and these fit perfectly. Plus I'm gonna do half a flat of each type of Snapdragon and then one of our 24 count cells of the Senecio. Yeah, that'll be perfect because I've got 50 seeds, two seeds per cell. Before we do our potting, I do wanna get things watered in here. I can't stand to see a wilting plant. And you know, we've done a lot of projects around here the past few years since we moved in. And I only have one regret about one project that we did, and that is not bringing a frost-free water source into this greenhouse. And we totally could have really easily, and now it's gonna be a lot harder. There's our water source, frost-free, that we can use any time of the year because it's buried deep enough below our frost line. We had that line trenched from our wellhead, which is way over there. We had it trenched over here. We could have easily at the time zipped another trench in right here and had a frost free inside. I think at the time we were doing that project, I just thought it wasn't gonna be a big deal because the water's pretty close and it is, and it really isn't that big of a deal not to have water in there, but it's just enough of a pain. I mean, you know how that is. When you can do one extra step to make something easier for the long run, do it, we should have done it then. So now we have electric and gas lines running right in this area. You know, we trenched again and ran gas, which there's our gas meter right back there and electric so that we can set the studio up and the Hartley up with heat. 
Um, so now we have to hand dig a trench over to get water over here. But that's gonna be one of our priorities this year because right now what I have to do, pop the door open. I've got this little length of hose that stays in here so it stays thawed out. And we have to wheel it out to the water source. All right, let's do that. Okay, and all the while, see all that water dripping? That's coming right off the roof, right, right over the top of us. Okay, so the hose runs over here and it makes it to where the door is open. Heat is escaping a little bit, you know, while I water. It's just a little bit of a process. So when it comes to water in the garden or anything like that, definitely, if you can do that extra step to make it easier, do it. Okay, I'm gonna water. Said my piece about the watering system here. <laughs> Everything has been watered, that's a really good feeling. So now we're ready to start in on this planting. I'm gonna start with the seeds first. This is pretty routine. I'm gonna pre-moisten my seed starting mix. We're going to fill in the trays. All of these need to be surface sown, so they need light in order to germinate. So if I was leaving them out here in the greenhouse, the sun shines plenty of light, like a lot of the foxglove and things that I've already planted need light in order to germinate, but they should do it just great. If you have them inside, do turn your grow lights on or keep them near a sunny windowsill. Uh, I am going to be topping these off with a light layer of vermiculite, which allows enough light into the seeds so that they'll still germinate, but it helps with moisture control so that they don't dry out too quickly. Also, humidity domes are very helpful. Uh, you can see right here, that they gather up moisture. They eliminate the need to water a lot right in the very beginning. Uh, in fact, I check these every day, one for moisture, but two so that they're not like too wet. Um, but once they all germinate, the humidity domes come off. We've also got Russell here to keep us company. Life is a hard one for this kitty. And I'm gonna make up all of my ID tags before we start this project. It's easier to do that in the beginning before I get all messy and everything on this table gets all messy. Okay, so let's get this process done and then we will move them into the studio. Okay, we are ready to plant the seeds now. I do like to, if at all possible, assembly line style prep the trays and, and plant seeds uh, because it's nice just to do the one step once for everything instead of having to you know, shift things around, get more soil out, get your hands dirty again, uh, that sort of thing. So if I get all the trays ready all at one time, then I can go through to all my seeds at one time, all my vermiculite at one time, and then move them to the grow lights. It really speeds the process up. Not that you really want to, I mean, it's a very pleasant process, but like the other day when we did 20 flats of perennials, uh, you know, that can be a really long project or a very, much more efficient, shorter project. So I'm just gonna get all of these trays planted. Again, I'm just gonna be surface sowing. So let's check out our Dusty Miller seeds. They're actually in a little vial. Yep, pelleted, perfect. Makes them a little bit easier to see. We're just going to put a couple of seeds per cell here, trying to separate them so that we've got one kind of in each half so we can separate these seedlings later and repot them if we want to. So you can kind of see these. You can see a seed here and a seed here. And we will take our vermiculite, do a fine layer over the top, and then I'm just going to gently press just so that everything is kind of firmly in place. And that tray is done. Same exact process with the Snapdragon. So let's get these five flats planted.
are all six of the trays that we started today. All of them are on the Oslo grow light system, which one is taller, one is shorter. Uh, they do fit these 11 by 22 trays really nicely. And then I have two lights set up and these are the high uh, output LED lights. So you don't have to lower them, which is so, so nice. But like I said, I do have the grow lights on during the day for 16 hours. They're on a timer because these seeds do need light in order to germinate. The light does turn off at night though. So they will be under all day light and in the night they will be in the dark. The Senecio is a new one for me as far as starting it from seed. I've never started them from seed. I've grown them from pre-grown plants before. So this will be a fun experiment. The Snapdragons though, those are one that I have started from seed for several years now, have had super great luck with them. We did a really in-depth video last year about it. So we will link that down below, but I went through all the different groups of Snapdragons there are. There are four different groups. So if you are planting them for production, you might think about um, researching the varieties that you're starting so that you can have blooms from you know spring through a hard frost because uh, th they bloom differently so groups one and two just really quickly you can watch the other video for more detail but one and two are kind of your cool season snapdragons they're more like spring and fall bloomers and then your groups three and four are kind of your main season uh, they can tolerate higher light, more light, and more heat than the other two groups. So um, usually the Madame Butterfly and Potomac series perform like crazy for us. So I'm really happy with those. The other thing about Snapdragons is that I don't ever stake mine. I don't put any of that netting. <laughs> Russell is right here. I don't put any of that Hordanova netting or anything to keep them upright. I might do that at some point. It might even be this year. I don't know. But the thing I like about the Snapdragons is that they are geotropic, which means if their branch starts to grow like along the ground, which if you don't stake them, some will, especially the ones on the outside of the plant, they'll start growing horizontally and then they will uh, naturally bend upward and grow upward because ge being geotropic, that's just their kind of the plant's response to the earth's gravity. Anyway, so then you end up with a bent branch and they don't straighten out after they've done that. But for me, that's awesome because you can put them in the edge, like around the edge of the vase and they can kind of spill over and they have that natural draping effect. And I love that in arrangements. So for me, it works out great. Okay. So these will sit in here with the humidity domes. I'll check on them every single day. Once the full tray has germinated, we will pop the lids off. Now these Snapdragon seeds are tiny, like Russell, really. They are itty bitty. If you can get them pelleted, I mean, the seeds don't last as long if you're wanting to store some, but they, the lot easier to plant because I'm pretty sure I got like five, six seeds per cell because there's no way I'm gonna spend a ton of time metering out two seeds per cell. So we'll have some thinning to do in the end. But this year I'm actually growing one flat fewer. So 72 less plants than I grew last year because I just want them for one row in our cut flower garden. We typically grow their 60 foot rows. Uh, we do three rows per, per row, if that makes sense. Three runs of drip tape per like three foot row. So it's essentially 180 feet of snapdragons. Last year I had um, an extra tray, so I had to spill over into another row and I don't really wanna have to do that this year. I mean, snapdragons are awesome. They're productive all season, but I want room for other things as well. Okay, we're gonna go pot the other things that are out in the greenhouse, most of which I'm just gonna pot up in some used plastic containers I have out in the greenhouse already, but I wanna get a pretty pot for that ivy. Kind of think in this one right here. These are so pretty. And you know, pinching snapdragon seedlings is also important. I've showed that in videos before. Hold on, I'm trying to get the door pinched shut over this hose. When you pinch your snapdragon seedlings, what you do is you wait till the seedling's like six or seven inches tall. It's got several sets of leaves. And then you go in and you pinch it back about above the second or third set of true leaves. And that will encourage a really wide branchy plant with lots of stems, uh, but it does delay bloom time. So if you wanted early blooms, you would want to maybe skip pinching on some of your crop and pinch some of them so that on some you'll get early blooms and then the other ones will be nice big bushy plants. But if it doesn't matter, like when you're harvesting them, definitely pinching is a good idea. Okie dokie, here's what we're gonna do next. Oh yeah, that'll be beautiful. And then we've got our blackberry, we've got our lily of the valley and we've got our monk's hood. I absolutely love. I was noticing there's also some butter beans in here. That'll be fun. This is what I usually do with my extra seed starting mix. <laughs> I tip the tray upright because the cats come in here and then I put my leftover bag over the top of it so the cats don't think it's a litter box. Works well, but I'm gonna need this again. I have a couple of part bags of potting soil here and I've got some gallon sized containers. These are from, what did we have in here? Mom's in here last fall. We'll maybe use some of those. I don't know that any of these are big enough. And then I've got some other random containers that we'll use. 
Now the monk's hood is a beautiful perennial. It's very poisonous, so you do want to make sure like to keep it out of the reach of kids and pets, things like that. So this isn't going to be grown in our garden like as a cut flower. It's going to be tucked into the back of our west side flower beds, I think. Oh, how fun is this? They're beautiful though. They've got that bloom structure that I love. They come up on a stalk and then have these deep purple hooded blooms. Wow, these have held really nicely. I haven't been able to get to these until today and it's we've been home for over a week. Look at that. Yeah, I think actually little four inch containers might be perfect. Right here, I think these will work. I don't usually add moisture to my potting soil before I pot stuff unless it's seed starting mix. But these bags have been open for a while, so they're kind of dried out. And I'm just going to incorporate that leftover seed starting mix right into this regular potting soil. Okay. A little bit of soil. Oh, I'm so excited about these. So a little bit of soil. You can see the structure of the root right there. I'm going to put that down in. I'm not going to quite cover that whole bulb almost the rhizome it's like that a bit of soil almost look like they grow like iris don't they tuck that down in there yeah perfect i'm not sure exactly how tall monk's hood grows i want to say like what two to three feet maybe but i do believe they're really winter hardy like zones three through maybe seven maybe three through eight so they should do really well here. I know that transplanting them can be a little bit tricky. A lot of people say to re they recommend growing it from seed, but these look so robust and healthy. It does uh, make sense to do it now. You know, if you do want to transplant, like divide and transplant early spring or in the fall is best. These have been in a bag, so I assume that they will right themselves now that they're in the light. Two left. Oh my, look at that one. Wow. I wonder if I have a tray I can put these in. Okay, next are the lily of the valley. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 starts. Oh my word. Okay. I think what I want to do is plant several of them in the same container. And then when we're ready to plant them out, we will separate them a little bit more. Let's see, is this even deep enough? Yeah. So again, a little bit of soil and I'm just gonna start lining these up in here. Five per pot. Here's a close-up of what the Lily of the Valley start looks like. My word, a little soil in the bottom. And then this container, I'll probably just put, you know, that kind of fills it up. Put three, maybe four. Let's just stick with three. Yeah, that worked out well. And then our blackberry, which I do think I'm going to need a bigger pot for. How fun. Tiger Mountain. Looks great. So soil first. And nest that down in. And then soil on the other side. Okay. Made an ID tag for it. So now we just have our little ivy here and I think I've got just enough soil to get this project done. And there they are all done, planted, watered in. 
The ivy looks really pretty in that concrete container. That one is from Unique Stone and I cannot remember the name of it, but I just think they're so beautiful and perfect for four inch house plants that you bring home. Uh, blackberry, the monk's hood and lily of the valley. And I'm just really looking forward to growing some of these things that I've actually never grown before. Like I've never grown lily of the valley. My parents have it in their garden. So technically like I helped take care of it when I was growing up, but I've never had it in my own personal garden, which I don't even know how, how or why I haven't. I love them. I think they're so beautiful. And then uh, the monk's hood I had in our last garden, but I haven't planted any here yet. So that's perfect. And then the blackberry, I've never even actually heard of that specific variety. I'm going to look it up. Up. We have eight blackberry plants going out in our garden that we planted last year and it's the first time I've actually planted blackberries here as well. I've done those in containers but not actually in the ground so it's really fun to add these things into the mix. Anyway that's it you guys for today's video. Super happy to have our next round of seeds going. That just means we're that much closer to spring and it looks like a lot of the snow that we had this morning is already melted off so I can go back out and start pruning roses again I think. Anyway thank you guys for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.